Hey folks, welcome to the shop. This is Mike again with Plus 8 Precision, and uh, it's a hot one out here. Alright, what I want to show you is a practical application of a roll dimension. So you can see I've got a little detail here. It's not a very big detail, but it's it's got a lot of complicated shapes and geometry. Um, one of the things is this surface here has to get an angle cut on it. So out in space, how do you measure that um, so you can machine it accurately? And that's kind of what I'm going to show you. All right. Back here, I've got it set up on a little sign bar. And I'm using a sliding parallel to find the bottom of the detail. And you can see I have a little roll in there. That roll is 5 eighths diameter, 0 0.625. And it could be sure whatever you want. Hang on. All right, we're going to cut to the computer. Out, we're going to cut to the computer to show the viewers the roll dimension. And then we're going to come back to this point. All right, so what we're seeing here is um, I've created this block in NX as a solid to represent a roll dimension. So you can see what I'm trying to do here is from the tangent point of the roll to the surface that my cursor is going across. Um, that's the dimension we're looking for. So if we go into a sketch We can, um, we can see the dimensions. I don't know how if you can make them out clearly on the screen. But in the sketch, <clears throat> um, you identify your roll for whatever size roll you have available. And you set up your lines, tangent and perpendicular, to the surface that you're going to be measuring. The CAD software makes it sort of easy to do um, because you don't have to even know trigonometry. You just have to know how to use the CAD software. This is a relatively easy shop math um, formula to complete. Every good machinist should have some grasp of trigonometry <clears throat> in order to complete these types of dimensions. Um, to be able to measure features that otherwise would prove difficult to measure. So I'm just trying to give you a good overview of how a roll dimension could help. Um, in this case, finding this surface height from nothing, but it is relative to the block because of the roll and the position of the roll. So, we'll go back to the video now. Where I'm measuring the top of the roll. Okay, so, now that you know um, how I arrived at the roll dimension and heights, the top of the roll is going to establish our zero. Okay, and then we're going to simply find that. See if I can get you in and show you the indicator. Now, we're not getting a very good view of it. And the roll is moving. This is very hard to do with one hand. But you can see we're very close to the zero mark. Okay, there you go. Now you can see. Alright, so that's the tangent point of the roll. Now that doesn't do me any good until I know what the height is from the work surface. So that's how what we do next. 
All right, now we're over here at the surface plate uh, with a small brown and sharp Hyfe Master. And we're going to try to find that zero, which I've already done. Okay. So we're on zero. And then we have to look at the reading, which is kind of hard to do. I normally use a magnifying glass. Anyhow, that height is three inches, three inches, seven hundred and eighty six thousandths. If you remember the, the, the computer, that dimension was thirty eight point one, which is inch and a half. So we take this height, what we just checked off the tangent point of the roll, we add the actual height from the top of the roll to the feature we're measuring and that comes up to 5.285 so now back at the height master I'm going to reset the height master for 5.285 5 inches and then I'll zero out my indicator at that height uh, I gotta turn the camera off and I can uh, I'll get that set up starting that portion from here Okay, so again we are at 5 inches, 285,000, that's the dimension we're looking for. And then you can see on the side we're just above the 5 mark. And we reset our indicator to 0. And now we have an established height to compare to back over on the mill. So let's go back over there. All right, back over here on the mill, obviously I haven't machined it yet, but you can see that I'm ready to go. Now you have to be careful when you're going from the surface plate to your machine table. You want to be as careful as possible sliding the surface gauge up onto the table, not setting it down where you could jar your setting for your indicator. And, and this is a common practice this comparator um, height measuring. You do this a lot of times on a surface grinder when you're grinding, form grinding surfaces, um, and you just work to a zero. And uh, that's basically what I'm doing here. I'll set it up and start machining it, and then and then we'll go ahead and um, we'll machine it until we get to within um, the dimension we're searching for. Let me get that going.
We have at least 10 more to go, so let's take out 10. Let me get you in close for a, a better view. Alright, we machined the surface. We're not in the location we want other than the height. I need to step in a little bit more so it's flush with the walls in the back. But you can see the indicator we are at zero. And that's how you apply using a roll dimension to a height that's basically out in space. So now that surface is, will be in the right spot, and we'll just machine it until it matches the other features of the block. Um, hopefully this kind of content um, is something you're interested in. Maybe it is if you're watching the machine type stuff that I do. So if you'd please take a moment and you like this content, uh, subscribe to my channel, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment. Um, if you have a different way of doing this, put that in the comments also. Um, this is just the way I do it. Roll dimensions are very, very handy. Uh, you can also use a tooling hole location, which I think uh, one of the blocks I have in this series of blocks, I'll probably do a video on that um, because we have to rotate the vise and um, find a surface that needs to have an angle put on it and that surface will be relative to a tooling location. Uh, this is how the work gets done in the shop. This is the reality of it. Um, unless you have computer controls, which I don't, this is all being done manually and this is the manual way of doing this type of machining. So thanks for joining me in the shop. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Catch you on the next one. Mike with Plus 8 Precision. And there's just a close-up of that feature once it's machined. Fairly complicated little block. Um, lots of little angles and things. But that's how it came out.